have this belief that um, theater shouldn't just be for theater majors. I think you know every science student should have to be in a play at least once because you learn a lot about a lot of different things. Not only about the performing arts, but how a group of people work together on a major creative project and how we all work together to somehow create something astonishing. One of the marvelous things about what we do here in J-Term is that we essentially put up a show in three weeks. So it, it requires a kind of discipline that really appeals to me, both on the part of the creative staff but on the part of the students as well. Um, you have to be prepared, you have to be there, you have to be on time, you have to be ready to work, you've got to do your homework. It's important that just once we say this out loud, what we expect of you, and we expect of you something we call professionalism. Very, very important concept here. And professionalism, as it plays itself out, uh, especially in a very, very short rehearsal period, uh, means that Putting a, a show together in three weeks, that is really a challenge. Um, especially when it's a show as big as Hairspray is. Hairspray is a huge, what we call, ensemble show. I, in fact, I think there are maybe only three, maybe two solos that stand alone without the ensemble. Now let me see if the second one can be even more inviting than the first one. So try it again there, Nedla. So one, two, three. So come on! Two, three. Come, come on! on! Two, three. Come, come on! on! Yeah. So it's yeah. like a whole lot of notes for everybody all the time to learn. So it's it really in three weeks' time, actually less than three weeks' time, in like two and a half weeks, we have to get it all together. Hurry, get your cootie shot. Well, we rehearse six hours and then you put in extra time after. So rehearsing for, for Hairspray, um, this production is a lot bigger than people think. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And um, you get really close with your cast, but you, there are a lot of cues that you have to remember and, and a lot of steps. So um, putting it all together has been a lot of fun. Definitely the most work I've ever done um, on, on just singing and dancing. But um, it's a lot of moving parts. Let's work that out because it, it started out brilliantly and then it kind of just turned to mud for a while. Yeah. As exciting as it is, it's so nerve wracking because you like, these people are coming and they're expecting to see a lot. So, you know, these past few days have just been like high energy and high anxiety and high stress. But I'm really excited. I think it's going to be awesome. Hairspray is, uh, I remember when I saw it on Broadway, I thought this is a bunch of Broadway professionals working at the very top of their game. Uh, in one sense, it is just a big, loud, fast, and funny Broadway musical, and it is. The score by a brilliant man named Mark Shaman. Um, but it also happens to be a musical that's ultimately about something. I mean, it's ultimately about race in America. It's, it's based on a film by John Waters of the same name. Uh, so because uh, it is so effervescent and so musical and so fun, but also has some things you can chew on, uh, it seemed to be the right thing to do. Well, the message behind it is, is one thing that's very important to me. Um, I'm big into d diversity and issues of race and ethnicity on campus, so it kind of is right in my repertoire. And then on top of that, I really like the music, the time period, everything's really fun and cartoony and colorful, and I, I much prefer that to like melodramatic kind of musical. I play Edna Turnblad, who is Tracy Turnblad's mother. Um, the big presence on stage, physically uh, and characteristically. Oh, this is crazy! <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what am I wearing? <laughs> A house dress, scuppies, and sub -hose. Why? What are you wearing? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Edna's character is... Uh, Above all else, she's, she's deeply insecure about her body. Um, she's overweight, she's clumsy, uh, she's very, very masculine. Unfortunately, with Tracy and her husband Wilbur's help, she really comes forward and starts to love who she is for, for herself in all of her enormous glory on stage. I'm the cutest chick that you ever did see. Hey, Tracy, hey, baby, look at us. Where is there a team that's half that? It's fabulous! Go, go, go! go. It's a science class, she's like a walking show and tell. You know she's coming down the hall just from her smell. Amber is your queen.
quintessential high school mean girl. Um, completely two-dimensional character. There is no character arc, no character growth, and that's why she has been so much fun to play. And I want to be your Miss Teenage Hairspray. Remember, a vote for me from you is a vote for me. <laughs> what an unexpected ad lib, Amber. <laughs> There's so much you can do with these silly lines and the name she's calling Tracy. A trampy tunnel lard, Tracy tugboat. Uh, my favorite is Tracy Turnblaw. Tracy Turnblaw is a tramp and she's retarded. That's right, she's fast and slow at the same time. Although the show is cartoony and it's entertaining, it has a happy overtone, the undertones are very serious and um, the fact that it's Martin Luther King Junior Day celebrations and reflections this month, and Hairspray happens to coincide with that timing. I think it's great. It's probably more on people's minds. There's definitely uh, a lot about race, and it's interesting because the play is, I mean, the musical is mostly kind of like a comedy, but there is like there's like these commentaries on on uh, race that like kind of um, arise like throughout the storyline. I'm not sure if the uh, if the musical accurately uh, touches upon the subject uh, and gives it like enough justice, but I think it definitely puts it in the minds of audience members, which which is in itself a pretty decent achievement. I am Miss Motormouth Maybell. She is the the DJ on Negro Day. She's a really strong matriarchal figure in the play. I never mind love. It's a gift from up above, but not everybody remembers that. So you two better brace yourself a whole lot of ugly coming your way from a never-ending parade of stupid. <laughs> she really stands for equality, integration, and she motivates the blacks as well as the whites, Tracy, Link, and Penny, to really push for, for integration and to drop the idea of segregation. She is the one who organizes the protest with Tracy, and she gets the blacks on board. So she is, she is really important in the, the catharsis that really occurs. And there's pride in my heart Cause I know where I'm going Yes I do And I know where I've been Styles keep a changing When you think of hairspray you think of it's costume related, it's about style, fashion, and it's about the times too. It's kind of, there's, there's still issues in it, but it's, it's still entertaining. For the nicest kids in town, they're almost dressed for prom because they think that Amber's going to win and they want to back her up and they want to all dress alike so you can see a lot of the same pastel colors and the tulle. And you can see that it nips in at the waist. So it really shows off their figure. So as they move, you can definitely see their figure in the silhouette. I absolutely love this one because it really goes straight in at the hips and it's for Velma. And she really looks like the mean dance teacher who used to be a pageant princess. Now let me get it, that's it. There is an element of being stuck in the past, I'm hoping that the audience can tell that as maybe the waistlines get smaller or the skirts get shorter, it's kind of a way to see that, oh, people are starting to see change and people are being more receptive to change. I think the biggest technical challenge for me on this show as the costume director is figuring out the fat suits. Um, it's really crucial that Tracy and Edna look overweight and there's only so much we can do with that in the short amount of time that we have. But Edna, the, the actor who's playing Edna, has a 27 inch waist, he's a skinny little guy and he needs to look overweight. So I actually spend a whole week on my own in here making that fat suit believable as much as I can, making it fit his body and also trying to come up with a way to make the fat suit move with his body as much as I can. I wanted to pad his hips for example which would really help him look more like a woman. Um, but it's really difficult to pad legs and have the motion of the actor look viable. She's a hair hopper, that's what she is. <laughs> I got her put in detention again. The hair is a really big part of this production. Um, it, it's called Hairspray. Um, hairspray is a, big, is a big part of the script. So for this show, hair 
has an enormous role. We're using some wigs on some of the actors who either have really quick costume changes where the hair change wouldn't be possible backstage. <laughs> need to create the look and style of the 60s. So a big part of the makeup lab was teaching these actors to style their hair in the way that girls and guys in the 60s would have done. From a choreography standpoint, it's actually a little daunting. I'm really glad that we split <laughs> the amount of choreography because almost every number is a huge production number and has a lot of dancing. Um, but it's also really fun music and has been really great to choreograph for. Every other second is dance and reading through the script there might be a page of dialogue and then a gigantic dance number and um, these numbers are marathon numbers. I've never had to choreograph such long numbers before. I think that the biggest challenge for me has been, I have never choreographed for this many people before, and so, Making something in my head and then seeing all of them on stage together is like two very different things. And so being able to explain it well enough and put them all together so that the movement works. First one is here, 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 and then the um, I really like the song Run and Tell That. Um, which the Motormouth Gang and Seaweed do. Um, and so that was the, actually the first one that I choreographed. I choreographed the dance break from that song. It was the first thing I did because I love that music and I, it's music that makes me want to dance. And so I just automatically had so many thoughts about the kind of movement I could put with that. <laughs> prepare before each day that we choreograph and I have to really think how I can break down each step so it's efficient and we get work done. Remember on your circle, circle, dot, dot, dot. You all have to go the same way. I usually am the one dancing on stage. I've never really had the, the satisfaction of being able to create something and then watch other people do it and kind of be like a proud mom and it's like, yes, it looks so good and you're doing so well. We got the spirit money just for everybody. Deep as the river and soars to the sky. That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, opening night is always a very, very happy time for me because uh, generally the work has been done. You've solved the problems and you can sit back and enjoy. Um, also, there's that very, very delightful thing of your performers realizing what they have. It's hard to tell, especially in a comedy, and this is musical comedy, they tend to forget what's funny. They just forget that, oh, that's funny. And they say their line, and the audience howls, and, and you see them have that moment saying, oh my gosh, yes, that's a, that's a funny line. Our own fun-loving, freewheeling Brenda will be taking a little leave of absence from the show. How long will you be gone, Brenda? Nine months! <laughs> so, it seems like we'll have an opening for a girl who's just as fun-loving, but maybe not quite as freewheeling. <laughs> Um, just stepping on stage in that first moment when you're in front of the crowd, it's so exhilarating and it's, everything is worth it at that point and it's just pure ecstasy. It's so fun. The 
There's light in the darkness. It is always amazing to me just to see the kind of personal growth as well as artistic growth that you see in these students. And by the time you open, you, you know you've really accomplished something. Burning bright, showing me the way, cause I know where I've been.